born in 1948, which was a time in the world when the world was sort of rebuilding after the Second World War, mm -hmm. and there was not much toys around to play with. So uh, we were a couple of guys in my neighborhood where I lived that started to ride with bicycles. Ah, you know, all big. It was a woman's bicycle or a man's bicycle, but we rode them around there, and. Uh, that sort of woke up the interest for close where I lived, we had a motocross track. So I always hanging around there. And it felt by heart that this is my sport. This, this is what I want to do. And you know, coming from a home which didn't have much money, uh, I asked my parents that, can I ride motocross? And they said, sure, we, you can do that. Be, but you know how our situation is. We, uh, our cost of living is what we barely can bear. Mm -hmm. So if you can do it by your own, we wish you good luck. And that's what all I needed. I wanted to go. Yeah. So I was working part time after school, you know, and finally got enough money to buy an old motorcycle. And that's how it started. And being so into it and so focused, I, and maybe a little talent too. I got good results from the very beginning. So uh, the first year as a junior, I won every race I rode. So that more or less gave me a factory ride the year after with Bruce Barn, which was like you can get free bike and a couple of parts, you know. And from there on it was just so that was more or less my racing story and then I uh, with Husqvarna you you didn't earn very much money but then Kawasaki came along and that sort of was a different ball game yeah yeah then you were playing with the big boys <laughs> yeah so uh, I think that was uh, my, oh, luck and fortune with the help of other Swedish riders Torsten Hallman and Ole Pettersson have been a great help to me, so it's hard to make it all on your own. Yeah. So I think especially Torsten Hallman, he was a kind of mentor, taught me how to do it, especially when we came abroad. And, uh -huh. But I'm still... He always reminds me when I see him, he is now 71, and he said, you were the cockiest little bastard I ever met, he said. <laughs> Ah, good fun. Audrey is a really cool guy. He, he has a perspective on what he's doing. And uh, uh, no, I think it, it, it's, a, it, it's a really nice team. The drill could maybe sometimes be a little bit tougher, but I think they keep it the friendly way. And sort of. Uh, I think they are a little unlucky. We, what they put in should give more back, but so far it hasn't been so. But I think I think it will. Ah, in short words, start filming and I explain it to you. Um, yeah, first and foremost, we change the feeling of the shot. That that's important because everybody talks about the Kayala feeling and Showa feeling. It has to have a distinct way how it feels when you ride it. And we worked a lot on that. And uh, uh, in the same moment we also changed the dynamics inside the shop. The way oil flows. You can see now we have a high speed, low speed uh, compression adjuster at the top. The high speed works in three conclusions and it's, it's um, I can say absolutely for sure, it's the only high low speed configuration that really is a high low speed configuration. Because it actually works, normally they have a spring that activates high speed, which is very tricky and it's very unreliable. So I think we have by doing it this way it really creates two separate systems. And uh, 
before we had the CLC in the bottom, we have taken that away and put the rebound adjuster down in the bottom like it was in the old days. And we also changed the oil flow inside the shop. So I think we reach a point where we have a different feeling in the shop and I think it should appeal to the riders.